us to ignorance and confusion. Three men arose from humble beginnings with a message of wisdom and hope for their troubled times. Three men who would eventually change the very face of humanity. But they were run over by a bus driven by a somewhat grouchy Keanu Reeves. So, here are some other guys. It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is episode 286, and I don't know Phil's already this. waving oh. his hands around in some random fashion. We're not sure exactly why he's landing, why. An, airplane. He's landing an airplane. I started on something, and then I kind of <laughs> changed my mind. Semaphore for he's, good he's, evening. He's rolling with it, whatever it is. Uh, this is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. Yay. We share tools, tips, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. That's the hope. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me are the notated members of the Song Talk Radio Action Team. We have Forte Phil. <laughs> Forte. What is Forte? I don't know. It means that. loud. Oh, it means loud. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. That's great. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, take everything literally. Yeah. We have uh, Mezzo Michael. Mezzo. I'm not sure. That's Frank, a really dry cracker, mean? I think, it's isn't it? Medium. Well, that's mezzo. Oh. Mezzo means medium. Medium. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, moderation and everything, Mr. Moder- including moderation. <laughs> and on social media tonight, we have uh, Rubato Rita. Hey. Rubato. Yeah. Mr. Rubato. <laughs> Mr. Rub- Rubato. <laughs> and uh, on the tech board, it's uh, it's a uh, moder- uh, moderato Micah. Motorato. Motorato, which also means medium. Oh, medium tempo. Yes. <laughs> I see. <laughs> During the show, send your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Feedback at songtalk.ca for the old fashioned email. We'll share them with the audience. And please visit us at songtalk.ca to find out how you can be a guest on the show. And visit the website, uh, songtalk.ca, to find lyrics for the show tonight. Tonight we have uh, two guests. Catherine Frid is a Guelph based. Guelph based playwright whose plays include Half Full, Thistle Patch, Bearing Tony, Our Voices, Senior Selfies, Over the Edge, The Bold Canadian, Homegrown, Guinea Piggin, Pigging, <laughs> yeah, everyone just calls it Guinea Piggin, don't they? <laughs> Dead Cat Bounce, and a number of short works. She has been an artist in residence at Osgood Hall Law School and playwright in residence at Mixed Company Theatre. Frank Horvat is a composer, pianist and music educator. His portfolio of works consists of sh- uh, chamber music, pop rock, electronic, music theater, uh, musical theater, film, and large ensemble pieces. His music has been premiered in concert on four continents and featured on TV networks like the CBC, HBO, and Bravo. And Frank, of course, has been a uh, frequent uh, uh, guest and co-host on the show many yes. times. Uh, Catherine and Frank collaborated on the creation and production of a new musical called Spend Your Kids Inheritance. It's a reverse coming-of-age musical comedy drama about four seniors who plot to regain control of their finances and escape the Alpine retirement home. Spend Your Kids Inheritance has it, had its world premiere at the 2019 Toronto Film uh, Fringe Festival with a bunch of sold out shows and was also awarded the Fringe's 2019 Patrons Pick. So, welcome to Song Talk welcome. Radio, Catherine, and welcome back, Frank. Hey. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Great nice to, to have here. you guys. Thank you. Yes. And uh, we have some listener email. Listener email. We got to get a, one of those jingles, like letters. We get letters. <laughs> so this is from Tom uh, Tom B uh, from uh, Downington, Pennsylvania, U.S. of A. Um, he says. It would be cool if one of your podcasts was streamed live from one of your songwriters' meetup meetings. Um, would love to hear what goes on there, and it would give the uh, attendees a chance for us to hear their songs and to be critiqued live. Cheers. That is a really interesting that's a great idea. idea. That's not that's the first time we've heard that. I think. Yeah. Um, Thanks yeah. for writing, Tom. Yeah, that, it's, that, that's it's an interesting that's idea. idea. I think we'd have to... Again. Make sure that people coming out to that meetup know that it's going to be streamed live because yeah. works in progress. People may want that sort of public and may well, not. We could have a special one that they could shoot at a different time, maybe in an acoustically perfect environment. It would require a bit of technical know-how to record it nicely, yeah. wouldn't yes. it, Micah? Yes, to do that. <laughs> uh-huh. If only we had someone well, we who had to went to school for that. <laughs> if only <laughs> works here with us. Right. <laughs> Micah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, Phil. That's that's great. Thank um, you, Tom. Yeah, Thank you, Tom. Right. good idea. So, um, yeah, so Catherine and Frank, I, I, I'm curious. Like, how, so tell us the story. How, how did the collaboration come about for this play? Well, we actually met at a networking event that was held uh-huh. by the Playwrights Guild of Canada. 
uh, which was connecting playwrights and composers. So everybody went around the circle and talked. Um, I was really interested in meeting Frank because he was interested in doing in in working with political issues. Mm. And even though Spend Your Kids Inheritance is a comedy, it's uh, it's also it's uh, nonpartisan. <laughs> it's a nonpartisan comedy. <laughs> uh, it has some 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 satire and some kind of biting biting comments about how adult children treat their parents, right. which certainly I am guilty of as well. But um, so Frank had mentioned that he was interested in that, so uh, I, ta I spoke to him immediately after the, uh, the networking event, and we agreed that we would work on one song together mm -hmm. and see how we kind of liked each other, because we didn't know each other at all. Right. And that was five years ago, I think, mm -hmm. and we're still, uh, still going strong through many ups and downs and many rewrites of many songs. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you about the networking, because um, I think musicians and networking, is it, it's a very important skill. Can you talk about how you found the networking experience and what did you do to kind of further it or how do you make it work well yeah i you know the truth is it's kind of hit and miss i think right right so i mean sometimes you meet people and even from listening to them talk in their little presentation you know that this person's not they're not doing the kind of work i'm interested in hmm. but uh across you know, across different art forms is very difficult because what do I know about songwriting, right? I don't know anything about music. I, I got to grade four piano. That's it for mm. me. So you just have to kind of go on trust. And that's why Frank and I decided we would start fairly, fairly slow, right? We didn't mm. like jump into the whole thing. I, I sent him the script. He liked it. We agreed that we would work on a song together. Uh, I already had some lyrics for it. It, it was a love duet. And um, yeah, we... We liked it, and yeah. since then we have we have burned many hours on Skype talking about our songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the the uh, the general idea of it being about uh, older people and, and their children that that was that was what you brought to Frank in the beginning, the concept for the piece, or was it something you discovered along the way? No, I had a I had a script. Right. Right. That so I you, you had the story worked out, and you had some lyric. Right, and you knew you knew how many songs you knew where the songs were going to land in the story. Well, I thought I knew that, okay, but I, I didn't. I mean, <laughs> right. the the script also changed too as we went along. We did mm -hmm. a, a workshop uh, uh, reading back in twenty fifteen, maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, as a result of that, the feedback we got from the audience, there were significant changes in the mm -hmm. in the script. So there oh. the, there were necessary changes in the the songs as well. So and the structure did it change? Maybe can you take us through kind of a, a quick timeline of how it all worked out? So you met at the, at the meetup and you you tried one song together that went really well, and then what was the next stage after that? Um, well, then I think then we started to uh, to work on more songs. You know, we definitely started to work on more songs that were in Catherine's draft of mm -hmm. what we call the book. In right. the, the musical theater world, we call it the book, and that's basically the script. Um, but um, I liked the idea. A lot of times in the musical theater world, sometimes um, the person who writes the book is not the same person who writes the lyrics and, some, and not the same person who's the composer who writes the music. And then there's, there are situations where that's all one and the same. Um, we had a little bit of a hybrid situation here where Catherine you know, has written both the book and the the lyrics. And um, so that was helpful because then there was this sort of tie-in with what she was writing um, for the talking portions of the of the show mm -hmm. and so forth and tying that in nicely. And I was really happy to work with with Catherine on in that respect because it it sort of made it seamless and more flowing, mm -hmm. you know, more connected. But yeah, I, I think in, you know, like Catherine said, we've been working on this in, for five years and the biggest, the biggest challenge in writing a musical, or it's not necessarily the writing per se, um, but it's the workshopping that's so important. And the workshopping is basically the idea is you need to work with real actors and singers, you know, trained actors and singers. Um, who, especially who have training specifically in musical theater, because musical theater is a lot different than other forms of singing and acting. Mm -hmm. so, right, right. And and so we we had a we had a read through and we worked through about I would say about would you say eight or nine songs? Yeah, yeah. It was about eight or nine songs in the the draft that Catherine had of the book at that point. 
And so, you know, we worked at that, made some tweaks and that kind of thing to the music to see what fit well with the singers, what didn't fit well. And then after that experience, we made more changes, um, uh, like Catherine said, both to the plot and to the music. And in fact, because of changes to the plot, mm -hmm. often what ended up happening is I had to sc scrap songs and stuff like that. Right. So actually for this particular project, I mean... Um, the final, the final show, the final thing that we just did at the Fringe last year or last month, sorry, probably has around twelve songs plus mm -hmm. little incidental music here and there. But I've, I probably have a folder at home with four or five, maybe three, four or five more songs that mm, had to be dropped from the show that aren't there anymore. So, uh, and, and it wasn't just plot changes. Right? Yeah. We also worked with a fabulous dramaturge on this, uh, right. Andrew Lamb. And sometimes he would say, I'm not sure that, that that song is really, that's the place for a song. Oh, okay. Because songs have to come in a particular place in musical theater, right? Mm -hmm. They have to come in a place where people are, are have so much emotion that speaking is not enough, right? They have to go to the next level. The, and that's this is the director who's given this kind of input? That's right. Well, he yeah. ended up being the director for the Fringe show. We were very lucky to, to work with him. But he, early on, so a dramaturge is, is, a dramaturge is to a play like an editor is to a book. Okay. So we would talk with him about where we were at, and sometimes he would say, "I'm I'm not sure that song really fits," or you know, it's we we really could use a song here, hmm. right, in this particular place. So we would go back and work on another song. I have a question about the um, book. Something I always wondered. So you have at the very early stages. So you have this thing that you've written, the script that you've written. So you have an idea of because you don't have any music at this point. You just have this script. So do you have? Um, so you have periods where you sort of say, okay, th there's going to be a song here. Do you have an idea of, of what the song is supposed to be at that point? Or do you just think, oh, the song goes here, the song goes there, the song goes there? Well, that was part of what we worked on for, oh, for many years. Sometimes I thought a song should be in a particular place, and we wrote the song. We had this fabulous song. Mm -hmm. We both loved it, right? This happened with a number of songs, of course, about, um, what was it called? Uh... Which one? <laughs> there was a lot of one I liked. Downhill? I liked yeah, that one. That was great. A great song called Downhill, which was uh, this kind of Russian tempoed piece. And um, it had to be cut in the end because it, it, it seemed to me it would fit. It was all about, you know, where the, the older adults sort of get empowered and decide that they're going to uh, learn to ski, S K I, spend their kids' inheritance, and right. then the, the code. You know, kind of, it's kind of a fun code about all the skiing. Metaphors. Yeah, we're going on a ski trip. <laughs> right, yeah. we're going, we're going downhill. We're yeah, going yeah. to SKI, and uh, despite the fact that we laughed hilariously over all the time we wrote it, it had to be cut in the end because it just wasn't a moment when a song really fit the whole. So okay, song. so I'm just wondering, what I'm wondering. So you have this the script, and then you think, okay, I, we have the songs A, B, and C. How do you go about creating those songs? Do you have like an idea of what the song is supposed to do in terms of like do you have words for the songs or do you have a theme for the song or Yeah, for sure. And often what I did was um, write out kind of what I thought the characters would be saying. And then this is pretty pretty oh, okay. typical in musical theater. Then you scrap those lyrics yeah. and put them in a song. Right? If it's a big turning point oh, in, okay. in the piece. So you you write the conversational intent yeah. and then make that lyrical. And does it, do the lyrics usually come first, or is there a time when it feels like we should have this kind of music at this moment, or do, do the lyrics usually lead? Well, for us, um, I always suggested that Frank write the music first, and he always suggested that I write the lyrics first. <laughs> <laughs> and I won. <laughs> I always got the lyrics first. Yeah. All right. But I actually, I like that. I, I preferred that because, for me, my job as the composer, I felt in the whole process, was to accentuate the story. Right. Right? Yeah. And I can only accentuate the story if I know what the intent of the plot is at a particular points in the story. Right, so for me, I always appreciated Catherine's 
you know, discipline and create creativity in having really everything mapped out nicely. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the I had I read what the the the, the script or the lyric, uh, the talking points were like what the the dialogue was between the characters leading into the song, and then she gave me lyrics and poetry and stanzas all set up. Mm. Now, what was interesting though in the creative process is once I got into it. And I had all that as a starting point for myself. Often, I then would tweak. I would tweak. So often I did, um, I would change her stanza structure to fit a certain Mm -hmm. idea I had. Uh, I would include words, take out words. Words like I call superfluous words, you know, like if, you know. They don't scan well. The very long journey. Well, I don't need very. I just need the long journey, you know. Mm -hmm. Or just long journey you yeah. know i mean i had an idea for a thing i don't even need the you know and and we would have discussions about that but catherine um this is helpful in working with somebody like a, if you're working with somebody who only writes lyrics um catherine is underestimating or under downplaying her her musical knowledge mm-hmm. the great thing about working with catherine is she was just like a poet it, she was really sort of sensitive to pacing and Neither. syllables oh, and right. where the emphasis in, a, say, a phrase within yeah. the stanzas yeah. would be. We had a lot of conversations about that. And I actually really um, appreciated that in my writing process because I would, you know, I would get the song, I would have, the, you know, the, the, um, the lyric sheet there, and then I would write, and then I would bring it back, and she said, I like this, I like this, but you know, in this line, you're emphasizing the wrong, what I wasn't intending, I, you know, oh. I, was in- I wanted this syllable to be emphasized, and that could be through an elongated note, or, or just, you know, uh, a contour of the melody, or you're going up to the note, down to the note, that kind of thing. And so she would give me really great notes on that, and would really influence the piece uh, for the better. And then sometimes in that pro- creative process, I dug in my heels too, you know. I would like, no, I really want, it might feel abnormal, but I like the rhythmic feel of this. I think it's creative, it's original, it's giving the, the character a certain, you know, a flair and that type of thing. So, so we would go back and forth in the discussion of how to emphasize these things. And of course, this is especially important because you're dealing with songs that aren't just songs, yes, they have, for me, they had two principal intentions. One was to set the mood uh, for the piece, and if you're like not listening to the words, can you just tell by the way the singer's singing and the way the accompaniment working, mm. is it you setting the mood for the thing? But equally important, of course, was that often these songs would be pushing the plot along. Yeah. It was just mm-hmm. part of the storytelling. Whether the characters were doing dialogue or singing, it's storytelling, and the story keeps going even within the song. So my job as a composer is, yes, let's do something original compositionally, mm-hmm. but you can't go off the deep end and then not do something where the audience can't even understand what the singers are singing or saying right. and that type of thing, which was a lot different than you know just writing standard songs. You know, as a as a as a composer of musical theater, you have that extra responsibility which is really important the responsibility of of being accountable for all the other artistic elements that are happening at that particular point especially the words the the writing you know mm-hmm. do you um did you develop wait, wait, like a theme should, oh, we should let's oh. hear one oh, okay so I mean, we've been talking about this and not <laughs> oh yes i want to hear one of the songs okay, do you, what, you want to so, set you guys want to set this song uh, yeah, this is called this is it the, for this is it what you want to talk about is that stage what's going on in the, the show yeah. at that point so uh this is it is actually the cl- the climactic song in the in the whole piece uh we had a completely different version of this song originally and uh, neither of us can remember anymore why we threw it out and started all over again but we did and uh, and we really mm-hmm. liked this version so in uh, at this point the older adults have had uh, disagreements with their children and um without giving the entire plot away they are lost at sea out in a little dinghy and they're uh, Sorry, literally <laughs> literally <laughs> yes. a lost yes. in, a, in a metaphor <laughs> and their uh, their children and uh, relatives and and friends at home are lamenting the fact that they had right. these disagreements all right so when you're going to hear right, the right. song you're going to hear oh, really two scenes going on at the same time you're going to hear one set of characters the uh, older adults and then 
and the song will juxtapose in another verse and then even sometimes singing on top of each other that they're adult children singing as well. So, so it's a little bit of an interesting composing technique here. Cool. It's always seemed a waste of time to speculate on my demise. But I'll make an exception right now. The future's never guaranteed. Tomorrow so far from this bow. Maybe this is it. Dawn is missing. Who'd foresee? There's no chance now to agree or for my apology. And my final memory, giving mom the third degree, is this it? What are you doing to find my mother? And my father. I can't do much. I just got fired. What? It's not all about me. I heard that in therapy, yet this catastrophe unveils epiphany, it's not all about me, this is it. I realize now there's much to do. Family squabbles bring no peace. This bickering we can transcend. I won't accept this as my end. Tomorrow I'll make my amends. This can't be it. I realize now. Instead gave cash and a bad Google map. How long since they even drove a car? And they're on drugs, like for their heart. They got no apps, couldn't even find a cop shop. Maybe I gotta talk. This is it. Right. That was This Is It from the musical Spend Your Kids Inheritance. Lyrics by Catherine Frid, music by Frank Horvat. And the singers, Frank, were? Yeah, the singers, this is a, this is a so, studio a demo <laughs> recording we did a, a couple of years ago. So the singers you heard there were Penelope Cookson, Renee Stein, Reed Spencer, Brian Tucker, and Tyler McKinnon. Mm. Yeah, I want to backtrack to something we were talking about before, Catherine. You were saying about it, it almost sounded like you, you would take the story, take dialogue, and then you have to write lyric because there, there's actually a fairly wide gap there. You know what I mean? Like, like, like dialogue is not lyric. Um, can you talk about how, like, like, like Frank was saying, like you do have a, a strong sense of meter and of and of rhyme and of all the things that make a song a song, but it's not the same as writing a script. Right? Had you written songs or lyrics before this? No, I. Had, th this was the. This is the first musical I've written, but uh, I've written a fair bit of poetry, mm -hmm. so it kind of stemmed from that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for, so in a song like like this one, this is it. Um, I had dialogue where they all talked about these things to each other, right? The, mm -hmm. the older adults talked about all the, the miscommunication that had happened. And a lot of those details, certainly uh, there was probably no phrase from the dialogue that ever made it into the song, right? right. Because there's, there's a bigger arc that's happening in the song. Right. So they just, uh, they... They talk more generally and... Uh, so you're, you're literally tearing down the entire 
scene and then rebuilding it as as a song. Yes, basically. Exactly. Does okay. this do the songs ever? Um, do they sort of state um, the emotion at the moment, or does it cover a transition where people do realization, and then you know they start off with a position A and wind up at position B at the end? Does that happen, or is it all? Yeah, I, I like to do that in songs. We both like to do yeah. that in songs to make them make them move. So in this song, this is it, right? The the um, adult children have the realization, which which always got a huge laugh in our show, right? Right. It's uh, now I've forgotten one. The line is um, of what the um, the line was here. Um, it's not all about me. I heard that in therapy. Yeah. Yet this catastrophe unveils epiphany. It's not all about me because in our in our in our show up until this point in the show, the kids were the adult children of these of these older adults. They were um, they were always very self absorbed. You right. know, it's like my mom is you know making my life a living hell and blah 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 and you know, and it's just like now finally. You know, finally, you know, they're starting to have some sympathy for their the plight of their mom, their parents, but only because they're lost in sea. You know what I mean? Right. Partly in that, but they're also having this realization from a traumatic moment. So, from my standpoint, musically, I was trying to make the music a little more tense. So it's sort of like a bridge. That that section I just read, that's okay. the bridge of yeah. the song. And I did a, a sequence, ascending sequence, where every line is going up and up, you know, like just up a, up a tone, every line. So then when they get to that line where it's, not all about me, this is it. So it's like a climax within that. You know, and so I tried to show that it just kept building. They were like, oh yeah, I've it's not just all about me. I heard that in therapy, yet this catastrophe, and it's just going up a notch tone-wise, every line and chord-wise and stuff. So, yeah. We did, had um, other songs like that, too. We did that. Yeah. Did um Now, did you start uh, developing, like, musical themes, and then those musical themes sort of came out into the songs, or how do you handle the whole composition of the um, of all the pieces throughout the... Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, this is where my process was actually very similar to my regular process, and and that is, um, as we've talked about before, uh, for me, improv is really, really important. So, um, so I sit at my piano at home. I have a mic set up, hooked up to my laptop, and I just start uh, playing. Uh, often I'll, I want to start with some kind of rhythmic component on the piano, like a, for a piano accompaniment, just to get me in the groove and the mood. And then I start trying to plug in, um, uh, plug in melody uh, over this sort of set, um, set sort of piano, rhythmic piano and harmonic uh, piano accompaniment I got going on. Um, so this might be maybe weird, but uh, for somebody who's not a singer, but when I write songs, whether it's for a musical or not, I sing everything. And I sing everything in great detail. And the only person who's really been privy to that is Catherine and the cast when we were working on it. It's really actually quite embarrassing to hear me <laughs> sing that because I'm singing all parts. High soprano parts, right. low parts. I don't care. I'm singing because I want to know what it feels like and sounds like. Uh -huh. And so I'm belting it out. And I don't really write anything down. I don't need to write down lyrics because Catherine's already done it for me. And I don't write out uh, like um, lead no sheet or score yeah. until later. Right. Once I'm really satisfied with what I got going on because I'm a manic writer. Um, Catherine was always like, oh, we've got a lot of work to do and it's going to be this. And it's like, don't worry. Once I start, I'm done and fast. <laughs> like uh, some, most of the songs I could write within an hour or two. But huh. I just go... I just go all out because when I get on a roll and I get something, I just go, 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 and I, and uh, since I don't write anything down, I'm just recording constantly. And then it goes quite quickly, and I'm just improvising and remembering themes that I have earlier, and just continue that for new verses and stuff like that. So you don't so, repeat though the it is, or... it is true that we spend a lot of time previously talking, right before oh, we started yeah. writing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, but, but not... what this song was supposed to do, right. and the kind of what we, where this was, what songs were bookending it on either right. side. We wanted them to be different. So mm -hmm. yeah, there was all Sorry that. Sorry to happening. Uh, interrupt, but um, we have to take a quick break, and we will be right back after this. Like now? Should I should I talk yeah. now? Okay, really? really? <laughs> 
For those of you just joining us, you're listening to Song Talk so Radio, streaming on songtalk.ca. And tonight we're talking to Frank Horvat and Catherine Frid about their collaboration for the musical Spend Your Kids Inheritance, a musical theater piece that was it did gangbusters at the Toronto Fringe a few months ago. A month ago? Yeah, last Recently. month. It was great. So, uh, so stay tuned for a moment. Uh, but don't forget, we'd love to hear from you even during the show. Feel free to interrupt us. So share your thoughts and questions with us at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Or send an email to feedback at songtalk.ca. We'll share your thoughts and answer your questions here in the show, as we did earlier at the top of the show. And coming up on future Song Talk Radio shows on August 27th, we will be talking about soundtracks with our good friend, special guest, Matthew Reed. And then September 3rd, we're going to have Stark Naked from Stark Naked and the Flesh Tones On, which is very exciting. One of the original Toronto punk bands, and they're still going strong. And also, if you're in the Toronto area, please join us at our next Song Talk meetup this Thursday, August 22nd, from 7 till 10 p.m. at the Transact Club. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meeting. So please stop by songtalk.ca for the link to meetup. And back to our show. Yeah. And uh, in case you're listening to this on podcast, sorry you missed the meetup, but join us next time. Yeah, yeah. it was really good. We <laughs> it was great. a lot of things, and the songs were fantastic. Yes, and, lots of time. And who knows, perhaps in the future we'll... Start uh, live streaming them. Yeah. Live streaming, live streaming. finding a way to get them on the right. So I, I want to ask you guys about because okay, when 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 you tip, when we typically talk about songs in yeah. the in the typical you know pop rock country folk whatever format, there's always an element of some kind of a theme or a chorus that you repeat uh, at certain points during the song. And although those kinds of songs through the verses and the bridges, you can have a sort of structure or a story yeah. that goes through it. It sounds like you guys were very intent, or at least you from your point of view. Frank, you were intent on the music really following what the story was telling, and and if it meandered and if it and if it went a, a slightly different way uh, to a section that we haven't heard before, like a musical idea that we haven't heard before, it just reflects the story, and that's you just let it sort of grow organically. Uh, partly, yeah, no, I definitely I don't want to make it seem like it was like you know a st structurally musical anarchy or anything like that. There was a lot of the songs I did use standard verse chorus structure like the last song of the show that that you guys um can play later i mean that that's a standard chorus or verse chorus type of thing pre mm -hmm. verse pre-chorus chorus that kind of thing extended chorus at the end for for build up that kind of thing but otherwise um it was interesting because you know uh, i remember i can't remember which song Catherine, but i remember your your um the way you had mapped out the stanzas and stuff and made the way you envisioned it i just like completely blew it up you know what i mean and i just completely moved things around as far as where the groupings of like the stanzas would be and and how i would repeat it and then what it ended up i remember one of the songs we worked on you have to go back and write more mm -hmm. because i all of a sudden i envisioned that song as being let's say verse chorus but the way she had mapped it out was just like like equal verses and stuff hmm. but it was like oh. oh no i'm thinking chorus you know so now we need a chorus or or i what she maybe thought was a verse i thought as a chorus and now all of a sudden we need a whole bunch of verses <laughs> yeah, you know okay. i mean i remember right. that kind of thing happening mm -hmm. okay. and and um very rarely did i ever have to cut like this like oh no we're not going to use any of this stuff it was usually we need more you know what I mean? So, did, did, um, did you did you have did like you a bank? I can't remember. There was one yeah, song. I, I don't know that. if I made it to the final show. Yeah. But I'm a very a very spare writer, so I prefer to be on the the side of letting the actors portray more rather than being a very very verbose. Right. So that's true. And and one of the interesting things for us was, um, and I don't know how you can ever tell this in advance. We actually got along very well. Like certainly we we had different ideas about a lot of a lot of different songs, but we we found a way to to compromise on things. Or if there was one thing that one of us really felt strongly about, the other would say, "Okay, like we're we're going to find a way to work with that." Mm. Yeah, no, that that was very good. Like like Catherine said, we've been working on this for five years mm -hmm. on and off while we've been working on other projects. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but definitely the last six months or so leading up to last month's fringe was the sort of the culmination and and that was like the ultimate. Like we were having rehearsals, right? The actors and uh, were were practicing or rehearsing and stuff and learning this stuff. But because we had a great cast in the in the three or four weeks leading up to the fringe, that was in essence our 
climactic workshop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so we were making lots of changes. I made, I remember every night going home, you know, with a list of little changes I had to make. Oh, we're going to take out this bar because, you know, this little in- instrumental interlude is dragging on too much and stuff. So as much as, um, and I know you, you felt that way just for, for the script port, mm-hmm. the dialogue portion too, it's so hilarious that when you hear something in your head, you know what I mean? Or you envision something in your head, but then you get, as I call them, real people to sing or <laughs> sing or yeah. say this stuff. All of a sudden you're like, whoa, what the heck was I thinking? You know, it's like this Sounds was completely different. Yeah, it's yeah. like, and then, you know, it ended up a lot of little tinkering went on, you know, in order just to make I guess it right. You had perspective once someone yeah. else is putting what, those was, words. Was most of that taking, out there. taking stuff away or was it also, t- also adding stuff? Um, it was not, sometimes it was taking away, but it was more or less changing, changing things. things. Okay. Like even just like the littlest thing, like me changing a note in a melody, you mm. know, in a phrase, somebody had to sing a phrase and instead of going up to high E, I only went them, they went up to a high C or something. And it was just like, or that, or it was like changing keys or, Major tonight, or right? yeah, or, or that kind of thing or, or changing a chord, you know what I mean? Let's change the chord here so it sits better and in, in setting the mood and the tone. So it complements how the character's feeling at that particular, with that, never mind what they're feeling at that particular point in the show or even that part of the song, but what are they feeling at that very moment, mm-hmm. singing that very word, you know? You would often be making, mu- I would be making musical decisions or or asking the director and asking the actors, how do you feel about this? Or, And then oppositely was great how the actors often gave amazing suggestions because mm-hmm. after all, mm-hmm. whatever's natural well, for, for them, them yeah, to yeah. sing, it makes sense, right? But and yeah, often I, I, they gave the best it. ideas. Yeah. You know? But at this point, so you show up at rehearsal, you, are you handing everyone sheet music? Yes. Yes, yeah, so we had Are they lots sight reading of sheet the, the melodies then? Uh, they no, they advanced. were listening. Well, they had my sheet music, but they also had my demos right. when I ah, wrote them. Right. So the, the, that, that are sacredly buried that will never be shared. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. if it had ever got out, it would, Frank would be so embarrassed. So. <laughs> were you influenced by any musical genres for this? Like, where did the, the styles of music come from? Or was it. Uh, you mentioned someone while we were listening, Phil. Uh, Who were you mentioning? Well, uh, like uh, Kurt uh, Vile, I'm a good one. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. For yeah, that yeah. particular one, yeah. yeah. You know, and th- this is the this was the tough thing about for me, the challenging thing about writing this show or sh- composing the music, is it's a comedy, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, I don't know about you guys, but. Writing a sad song is way <laughs> easier <true>. than writing <laughs> happy light music. Right. That isn't, that isn't going to be isn't corny or cheesy. That, that isn't going to be song. corny, cheesy, which isn't going to be da dum ba dum bum bum. Slide whistles and You know, and it's just like, okay. And I knew with our limited resources, all this had to go down with a piano mm, accompaniment, yeah. you know. So it's like, how do I do this? So for me, this was a really great compositional challenge how can i make interesting music and like tw- a set of 12 songs that feed off each other and i think that the big thing that helped me with that was the fact that it was an elongated creative process stretched out over time mm. Oh, like we've been saying we've been working on this for 5 years it's a long been, time we've been we work i would were we would work on two or three songs we'd get some people to try it out we talk about yeah. what's going on in the script that would change oh we heard somebody sing it let's tweak that now the song has changed complexion and then when future songs came along then you would sort of feed off of okay what will complement this song but also act as a little bit of a contrast and of course go along with you know the feel of the thing so I don't know I mean I saw my own show and I'm proud of what I did but I'm but I'm proud of the fact that I was able to create a set of songs that sort of like they don't all sound the same as each other Mm -hmm. but it's also doesn't sound like they're going out like I'm going if I'm going from song to song it's out of the left they sound field. They belong together but they're not all the same. Unless yeah. unless it was for a vi- basic for point. A so reason. for example, we have a right in the middle of the show, we have a, a hip hop song. One of our young characters who's a oh, friend yeah. of one of the seniors just breaks out in spoken dub poetry against this hip hop 
beats and grooves that I did, but it was that was the gag and that was right. a spoof. And then we have a punk rock song in the middle of the, show, <laughs> in the thing too. But again, that's for like a cameo of a special character and stuff. So you you can do things which are outlandish and stuff, but it, if it's only to accentuate what's going on character wise, but otherwise, you know, trying to create a flow. Yeah. Is, and, and, that's and an that's interesting that, point because I remember going to see. Um, Phantom of the Opera, and that's basically one theme through yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. It's right. one mel- melodic idea through everything, and, th- and I was surprised at how limited that was. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I didn't want that. I didn't want to write a variation of the same song for all twelve songs. Yeah, but what I did do was I definitely did quote. So earlier songs. So Catherine did this oh. ingenious thing. There is something in the world of musical theater that I learned in this process called the reprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The reprise is a fantastic little mini song, which is, I guess that's the best way to describe it, right? Which, uh, well, maybe you can describe. What's the purpose of a reprise? Well, it draws on and draws on and comments on the, the original piece, the first song that came up. But it also connected somehow to the story of what that that might have like it could be like an ironic, like a counterpoint to yeah, a counterpoint yeah. ironic twist yeah. to yeah. something that happened earlier. So you yeah, know. or a furthering of that character's arc, that particular story arc. Right, because well, usually the reprise lyrically it's different, but melodically it could be quite similar exactly. or the same. Right. right. Well, for me, I, I there was one particular reprise that I did, which was like the song happened at the beginning, and then the reprise for the song was near the end of the first act, really in the middle of the show. And for me, I wanted the same melody, but I completely changed the chord structure and the accompaniment uh, okay. pattern to make it more melancholy. Uh. I can't tell you why, but but I'll just say that in the beginning, that particular the main song was very fierce and independent and upbeat and fast, and then for the reprise version of the song later I had to make it very melancholy and so forth but I made sure that the singer sang exactly the same melody so the ironic twist was Mm -hmm. that the character wasn't in the same state it was earlier but it was now all of a sudden um, still singing with the sort of a poignancy of the same spirit they they had earlier but not in the same way am I explaining this right? Yeah that's that's exactly it Cool. And one of the other things that, that we learned through the rehearsal process was how the pacing worked, right, between the dialogue and the music, because we you, it's, a, it's a comedy, so there needs to be, you know, good pacing throughout, mm-hmm. but there also has to be time for the actors to do their comedic, what we call in theater business, mm-hmm. right, their actions on stage. And if there's too much happening at once, then the audience is going to lose stuff, mm-hmm. right? So sometimes we had to, like, put in more more instrumental time, right? Mm, with just right. more music without lyrics to give the actors opportunities to to do their, their business, business right. on stage. Huh. So there's there's incidental music uh, other than the songs throughout the. Uh, yeah, there is uh, not much um, in in the current state of the show, but but there is. And Catherine brought up uh, that type of thing where yeah, if there was certain important blocking and you know a certain comedic moment on stage, then I I remember I wrote just X amount of bars, but then I had to write way more. I had to write way more and go home after they were rehearsing and say, listen, they were saying in the rehearsal, we just don't have enough time to do all these actions that need to happen, you know, and the characters crisscrossing each other on stage age before so you know so that's that's an interesting thing and then how do you flow that in with the singing portion of those songs too you know so it was very it's very interesting because you're not just writing a song you're it's like writing a movie score as Mm -hmm. well you're writing it's like writing a movie score and a song and and instrumental music and you know and the actors are going to do it faster or slower depending like all those actions so absolutely you might have 10 bars of action, but sometimes the first night they're just hopped up and it, they do it in like seven bars and you have to be ready to go on to the... Oh, well, and that's the advantage of having a live piano player yeah. as Absolutely. well because they, exactly. because they, they kind Feel of move to each other, right? Yeah, but, you know, that's for me, that's why as a composer, as a songwriter, working on a musical, for me, is the most most collaborative thing you'll ever do. If you're a songwriter that really likes just to do your own thing and 
if you don't like people, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you're like, I just want to sit alone in my room and write songs and I don't want anybody to tell me anything or I don't care about the world of whatever. You do not write a musical. You know what I mean? <laughs> do not. But if you like to work with other people and you like to write songs, it is the ultimate thing. I learned so much in the collaborative process and I have so much more respect now for these other artistic disciplines from the writing, directing, okay. these actors especially. They, there's a reason why they call them the triple threat, you know? I mean, mm. people go up, singer-songwriters go up on stage and you stand still and sing your song. Can you imagine doing that, uh, enunciating, so people understand every word because it's important for a story that they have to know. Oh, and then also dance or move around, too, at the same <laughs> mm -hmm. time, on stage, while interacting with other characters and stuff. It's, it's and, and acting in props. a truthful manner. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. Yeah. having veracity and uh, handling props, right? We well, should do some. We should, song, uh, yeah, get to get to some new waters, shall we? Sure. New, new waters. waters. Move on to some new waters. Uh, anything about this? Can we set we this one up? Uh, this, is, yeah. this is when they're literally at sea, isn't it? No, this is no? the finale song. This is the finale song. For the okay. entire show. <laughs> so, does this give away the ending? <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy. Spoiler alert. It's a comedy. It's happy. <laughs> comedy. Everyone ends up happy. <laughs> they were on Earth all the time. <laughs> Stuck in a trough and at odds with my daughter Prepared to sign off like a waterlogged yachter But up here on the crest we see we're at the center Of an ocean of zest for life What an adventure! New waters, the past is our wake New waters, to let it overtake Leads to heartache to Stuck in a trough My whole life a disclaimer Felt washed up and cast off I guess I was a blamer But, but up, up here on the crest We see we're at the center Of an ocean of zest for life What an adventure New waters The past is our wake New waters To let it overtake Leads to heartache to <laughs> All right. <laughs> New Waters from the musical Spend Your Kid's Inheritance. Lyrics by Catherine Frid, music by Frank Horvat, and uh, the singing credits on that, Frank? Singing was from Penelope Cookson, Renee Stein, Susan Wilson, Reed Spencer, Brian Tucker, and Tyler McKinnon. All right. All right. right on. And this is the finale. Yeah, so, you know, this is what I was mentioning earlier. This is a standard verse-chorus type of song, mm -hmm. you know, and then with an extended chorus leading up to the end to make it all a joyous. As Catherine and I were just talking as we were playing, you know, these these uh, little uh, songs we're playing for you tonight on air here, these are uh, demos that we recorded a few years ago, and this is just a interesting example of what we were talking about earlier about when you work on a musical how things evolve over time like we're sitting here it's like oh that word changed and oh we added lots of harmony here you know? yeah, yeah, seeing and, the harmony yeah, yeah yeah and it's just like there's so many things that you're always constantly tinkering with and that are always evolving so um you know when i first started writing this musical and you know people said oh yeah it's gonna take about five six years to get this going i'm like what what are you talking about 12 oh, wow. songs i write in a week it's all yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, what are you talking about you know it's it's all done but no you really do need to constantly tinker because of the influence of all of these other 
uh, other elements on your music. Isn't, isn't that true even of like the really, really big productions like the Family Operas and the Les Mises and things? They go on for 15 years. New directors, new come on, come on new, new actors, new generations of actors. Are they tweaking those sorts it, of productions not, as well to a not, certain extent? It's not unusual for a musical to have, five, to have like eight workshops. Right. And it's development process. So before right. it's it's done. So we consider this to be like our our second workshop opportunity. And we were also helped very much we had a musical director on this piece. Justin McLean oh, okay. was the musical director. Uh, he's worked with a lot of musicals, so he was able to to give us some pointers and some advice too for directing. So what kind of things did he in. do exactly? Oh, well the big thing when this is again glaring as I'm listening to the these uh, demo recordings tonight is tempo. Mm. So you're doing a comedy, and there has to be certain upbeat nature to everything. And so there were so many songs that I had envisioned with a particular tempo. And then when we get into the rehearsal process, this is way too slow. we got to ah. pick up the tempo and <laughs> get it going. And I'm like, at first I'm listening and I'm like, I'm shocked. You know, it's like, oh my God, what are you doing to my music? You know, can you be singing? Too like, frantic. You know, cra- cra- yeah, it's too frantic. You're just going through. You can't hear all my subtle nuance compositionally. You know? <laughs> you know? And it's like, no, it's like this actually is flowing way better, you know, way better with, with which is more up tempo. So that's the uh, that's the big thing. And also, I'm not so talented musicalist. So when I was writing, you, you're sort of envisioning it in slower motion. But once people get used to it, it's like, why wouldn't this go faster? Because mm. it just has a more drive and more mm. pickup and that type of thing. Well, so. that's a certain thing about working on something for so long. You get used to hearing things a certain way, and then you get into workshops and it's 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 disruptive right it is at first but if you have an open mind and you realize wow this does sound better it is fitting better with the flow i mean we always talk about music as being you're just filling time and space right that's what music is that's what a play is about a movie a tv show you know it's like what are you filling in with sound in this time and space and it's just like if you have an open mind and you just let it come to you and you and you actually listen why listen to it having conversations this is where yeah the whole collaborative community aspect of this working together with a group of people and feeding off their ideas they might not be trained musicians or whatever Mm -hmm. but their opinions count a lot Mm -hmm. and really impact what you do i mean with Catherine, it's been like that since day one but the director and the actors especially and it even goes without saying i mean these are not songs that sit in isolation they have they have ramps up to them. They have yeah. things that fall out of them into dialogue and into, you know, like you say, interstitial music or whatever. Like there's, they, they, they're all, they're all, they're, they're all. The pace is the pace of the whole scene or of the whole show, right. not just the song. Absolutely, yeah. And and so you think about that within the song, what makes it impactful for the within the song itself. But then you have to also think about it as a set, a suite of songs, right? Mm. How do they? How like like, for example, I was very sensitive to the fact that we can only have one or two maximum ballads. If we mm. have any more ballads, right. then you know, then it's then it just drags it down the show. Down, Our yeah. show is a comedy. How can I have more than one or two ballads in the overall arch of the show? One of the things that we had a huge discussion on, Catherine and I, was the placement of the first ballad. In our original script of the first ballad was really close to the beginning. Yeah. And we really thought, oh my gosh, if we have this ballad so close to the beginning of the show, you know, you want to get people into the show, feel the lighthearted oh, yeah. nature of it, and that type of thing. And that really, we still had to have it happen relatively early, but not as early in the show as originally intended. So I was very provoked to write the very first opening song. Mm-hmm. Very up tempo, mm-hmm. very lighthearted. So you see, earlier we're talking about what, how do you come up with ideas for songs? Well, that was the big thing, and and that was the big thing that Catherine actually suggested, which is a great suggestion. The very first song of the show was one of the last songs I wrote. The mm. very first oh, opening really? ensemble, curtains open, da dum da dum bum bum. Here's the song to start. There's no dialogue yet. And I did that. That was a great suggestion because I knew then basically what I had done the entire show. Mm -hmm. And then I realized how much pace I wanted to create 
for the very, very beginning of the show. It's, it was very fascinating because really every song, really uh, every word, script, and other songs fed off what you were going to do with other songs, even though I wasn't writing in chronological order. Apparently, that's what they did with um, something happened to me on the way to the forum. Um, Comedy Tonight, the opening line was actually the last thing they did. Oh, mm. interesting. Which is, which, because I think it was the same yeah. thing, that they needed something that, mm. to open it up, that it was going to be fun and wacky. And right, because audiences, their test audiences weren't being cued that it was a comedy. They didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. yeah. So, it happens with bands often when they're in recording studios, the last song they do is the single or the album, yeah. the record label goes, oh, we need a single. They go, oh, can't make it. It's the last well, thing we, we, we do. Even, even song writing itself in a, in a, in a pop idiom, like you, don't necessarily, you don't necessarily do verse one first. Right. You, That's you true. start with the chorus or you start with something else. Like, yeah, it, makes, it makes a certain but you always end at the ending, and that's where ending. we are now. And that's where we are now. <laughs> so, lots more to talk about, but that's all the time we have tonight. There's so this much is, more to talk about, too. Yes, you have to come back and do show. a sequel. Uh, on This has been Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to our guests, Frank Horvat and Catherine Frid. Yay, that was amazing you. stuff. Uh, send us your impressions on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Song Talk Radio. Send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. And please stop by the site at songtalk.ca. .ca. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher.com, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and don't forget to sign up for a free newsletter at songtalk.ca. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mention on the show on our resources page on the website. And in, again, once again, if you're in the Toronto area, please join us. Our next Song Talk meetup is on Thursday, August the 22nd from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Transact Club. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Uh, thanks to Micah for handling the tech board thingy. Thanks, thank you, Micah. And thank you to Rita for handling our social yeah, media. Rita. Thank you, Rita. And most of all, we like to thank you, our devoted thank listeners. You. Uh, you can find, you can follow me at uh, neilmody.com. You can follow Phil at the Phil Emery on Twitter. You can follow Michael if he's on the grid today. Uh, next weekend, I'll be in Turkey Point. There you Turkey go. Point. <laughs> yeah. That means so your look house is empty. Right there. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Micah. At Jimmy Micah on Instagram. Jimmy Micah on, on Instagram from across the room, and Rita is shaking her head. Uh, She's no, not on the grid. The grid. <laughs> and of course, our our guest Frank. We can follow you at uh, frankhorvat.com. And Catherine, what's your favorite social media channel? I'm on Facebook at Catherine Frid. Catherine Frid. Oh, her ID. Another plug: spendyourkidsinheritance.com. You want to yes. know more about our show, hear more of the songs, read more about, and the wonderful actors. SpendYourKidsInheritance.com Is there going to be another like performance? Like uh, like French Friends Festival's done, but is there going to be... We want some. That's why we want everybody to go to SpendYourKidsInheritance.com <laughs> Tell all of your Spread producer, the theater friends about what a great show this is and then we are going to make that happen. We'll come back when we're at Mervish. And you, awesome. and you said uh, Spend Your Kids Inheritance. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> All right. And, of course, stop by our website, songtalk.ca. Like we've said a billion times already. Uh, browse past shows. Find out how you can be a guest. And keep on rating. Good night, everyone. Rock on, man. <laughs>